You always believe, don't bet on the monkeys, bet on the gorillas. I want you to explain that theory to all of our viewers here. So, uh, I think India has undergone a structural change where there is a shift from the unorganized sector to the organized sector. Within the organized sector, there is a shift from the weaker players to the stronger players. As an investor, one needs to recognize that and participate in that process, which is why the focus on gorillas. Um, what is the fundamental difference between gorillas and other monkeys? One, gorillas are rare. Two, gorillas are dominant. Three, gorillas have a, um, a lifespan which is more than double that of monkeys. Okay, so they have longevity. So companies which demonstrate these characteristics, to our mind, are gorillas. If you do a historical analysis, whether in India or any other uh, good developed capital market, anywhere in the world, you will find that bulk of the incremental value creation in any mega trend or any new sector over many decades is captured by the top three or four players only. Therefore, it is essential to participate in that. For example, in the 90s, if you had bet on the IT sector, but if you had ended up with a Penta4 software or a Satyam software or a Visual Soft, right, then you were in trouble. So, getting the mega trend right is important, but getting the leadership right is equally important, if not more. And if you get both these right, only then will you participate in the wealth creation process. What is it that determines this leadership characteristic? To my mind, it is intangibles. It is no longer tangibles. The kind of culture that a company has, the kind of institutionalization that a company has, and so on. Therefore, I focus on these three markers for me, as, uh, which are mega trends, leadership characteristics, and intangibles to identify potential future gorillas. So where is it that you see the future gorillas right now? Let's discuss the mega trends. Okay. Um, you know, meg uh, I'll classify mega trends into three buckets. Sure. One is the well-known mega trends. So what are the well-known or more mature mega trends? Mega trends like consumption and premiumization yeah. or financialization of savings um, would be long-term mega trends well known to all of us or even the digital growth. A few mega trends which are not so well known like India's female labor force participation rate is actually quite low. If India is to be what we all expect it to be then our female labor force participation rate has to go from around 30s to around 60s, where China is today. And whether we take 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years, but that needs to happen for India to sustain the GDP growth rate. The uh, percentage of population, which is above 60, is 11% today. But this is going to double by 2000. 50 or so, that change of demographics will throw up another set of opportunities. These are the kind of mega trends which are less well known or well appreciated. And there is a third set of mega trends, which is in the technology space, whether we talk about artificial intelligence, uh, electric vehicles, um, renewables, recycling, and so on. All of those are technology shifts. So. There are many mega trends which are in process. You don't have to participate in all of them. You just have to build your conviction in a few of them and find the leaders in those spaces. But again, Manish, you know, it's, it's kind of obvious who the leaders are in the spaces that he just talked about. But the prices that they quote at right now, even if you want them in your portfolio, would you be willing to pay that kind of price? So, I, well, I was the first guy to talk about caution on prices and uh -huh. what you pay for. But again, just to complete his point of, you know, the five big trends which we've been talking for years, which are finally playing out, that as this country's income level inflects up, 
it was very obvious that consumer discretionary will be great. And that starts with what we're doing with housing. So real estate cycles come back after 15 years. What we're doing to automobiles, then what's happening with home improvement, what's happening with discretionary spend on experiences, you know, tourism. You've seen what's happened to hotel and airline stocks, for example, over here. So this trend is not changing. And like I explained, the income curve is very steep in India. So the operating leverage companies in discretionary space, if you, if you do really have that five and 10 year outlook, for some of them, if you draw the number out, the numbers are very staggering. So it's not necessary, and again, Utpal will supplement, that just because it's a high P doesn't mean it won't deliver returns, because if it keeps delivering the earnings, and therefore it will then sustain that multiple, you can create enormous wealth. But you be damn sure of that earnings and your ability to hold for long term. That's what's defined, whether it was IT in the 90s, it was holding for 10 years which gave it. And that final blast which happened between 98 and 2001 was the real delta. If, if I 98, I thought Infosys is expensive and I sold it, I missed all the fun in the last three years. So that for consumer discretionary is still an opportunity, but multiples are in, in some cases north of 100. Most of them are 50 to 70. So you, you must get that level of earning acceleration. It won't happen in FMCG, but it'll happen over there. The second are platform plays, which are all these tech companies. Again, multiples are berserk, but that's really where technology disruption is happening at the margin. Now, whether it's a you know, home delivery guy or whether it's a B2C you know, brand or whether it's an uh, e-commerce type site and so on. So but two, is 200 a good just, price just for Just I'll quickly wind up. <laughs> Three is your financials. I'm ignoring my question. Sorry, sorry. I said, is 200 a good price for Zomato? Uh, I can't comment on individuals, but I'm saying this whole thematic of platform plays where India will productize and you don't then spend incremental money. So when, you know, when a consumer company creates brands and you go from a Tata T to Tetley and Starbucks, which is what they're doing successfully, or like they're doing in their hotels and they're, you know, differentiating across the categories, that gives you operating leverage. Or you, your cumin, people would have not thought of it in the past. So what they're doing is fantastic and I won't steal their thunder by, you know. So if, if that's kind of, you know, another big theme, financials, this center point of the country will pass through financials. And it's not just the banks, the wealth management companies, the mutual funds, the, the stock markets, enough range of things to play there. Uh, the fourth one was where you're privatizing. Historically, each time the government vacated a sector, the profit pool came to private sector and they tended to be natural oligopolies. So it's happened already in telecoms, they vacated telecoms, they vacated airlines and so on, like they did in the past with banking or they did with media and so on and so forth. So all that is also still coming. And fifth, the whole policy push is manufacturing. We want to go from whatever 16% of GDP to 25. So you can expect all the policies to come directionally in favor of whether you're doing semiconductors, your, your PLI will come for semiconductors, electronics, pharmaceuticals, chemicals. Question is, as he rightly said, who has the guts to say, I will put a world scale plant, I will beat BASF. Because the opportunity today is ITC's market cap is already bigger than BAT, which was the parent. The entire market cap of Suzuki is represented by the value of its holding in Maruti. The rest of it is free. Even more shocking number I'll give you. If you take out the Bharti Telecom value from Singtel, Singtel is worth zero. That's what the market thinks about it. So the world wants to give us money. We are saying we are not ready to take that money and explode our you know, businesses upwards and grow. And I do submit again, if, if I was still, you know, 10 years ago, I used to be an investment banker, I would be going out and raising tens of billions of dollars for all these large corporates, plus borrowing money left, right, and center from bond markets and uh, uh, the banks, which will allow you to accelerate the earnings which the market's giving you. We miss that opportunity even in IT. Infosys used to be what multiple, Wipro used to be what multiple. They didn't acquire companies at that time to grow. And we went at the end of the cycle in 2007 and we went and bought Chorus and we went and bought, uh, what GLR. is the one is Hindalco bought? GLR. At the top of the cycle. The point is, can we do it as corporate India early rather than later? ICICI Bank went and raised huge money, remember 2007? And then stock didn't go anywhere for, for that period. No. So the opportunity is we will get returns if the companies deliver. So the ball is not with the stock markets to take you 5 to 10. The ball is always with the value creators are the companies of India. 
and they have to see that earning acceleration coming, which is really what both of us are saying. So, Mr. D'Souza and Mr. Chatwal will be very happy if you think that's where the mega trends lie. Is it IHCL and Tara consumer? Yes, it is surely a well uh, <laughs> mature mega trend, and they are they've clearly demonstrated that they are <laughs> leaders in that space. Okay, so we'll throw I, I, I will to the, say, Aisha, yeah. the only group which is showing a mindset of productization is the Tata group, among the, among the mega A huge groups. round of applause. So, really. 